Um, hi. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. Y'all, the day is finally here. I started the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I don't even know when, it was definitely summertime because I read Akamath by the pool. It was such a journey, I loved it so much. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury back to back and it was amazing and it left on such a cliffhanger but honestly like, I just wanted to give myself a little bit of a break. I needed to like stew in my emotional turmoil and I'm like, let me just take a breather. I don't wanna fly through this series super fast because so many people have said that they have like never had a worse reading slump than after finishing that series. And I was really terrified of that. So I'm like, let me just take a week or two off. A week or two kind of turned into like six months and I'm so sorry because so many of you guys have commented and messaged me and asked when I'm gonna read the next book, A Court of Wings and Ruin. That's the next book, oh my God, right? Yes, A Court of Wings and Ruin. So many of you have asked me when I'm gonna like read that one next. You said you loved the reading vlogs. A couple of you even said that you were waiting to read it until I read it, which that's kind of a lot of pressure, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm here, the time is now, I'm so freaking ready. It's right back there, can you see it? Let me just go ahead and grab it. Let me see if I, oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay, okay, this is, <sighs> that was really graceful. Um, Here it is in all of its beauty. I am honestly a stan of paperbacks because hardbacks, hurt my arms and they're just big and they're hefty and they take up a lot of space, but the Akatar hardbacks are like the best purchase and decision I've ever made as an adult. Like, they are stunning. I'm sorry. This is like, have you ever seen a book this color in your life? I'm not even a fan of pink and I'm just like, this is beautiful. So yes, I am doing it. I am starting a court of wings and ruin. This is so hard for me to say. That is such a mouthful. A court of wings and ruin. Wings, I guess it's not that hard. I don't know. I'm ready to start this book. I feel like it's going to be crazy. I mean, it's been a while, but we definitely left with Feyre. went back to Tamlin, pretended like her love for Resand was fake. Her sisters are now also fairies and I think a lot ends up happening with them and love stories of their own. I really try to avoid spoilers of this series at all costs but I know a lot of people love Nesta and honestly I liked her all along even though she was supposed to be like a bitch and we weren't supposed to like her. I kind of liked her because I feel like she was the only realistic person in the entire book. Like she might have seemed like not on Feyre's side but it's like girl put yourself in her shoes. I, I kind of get it but I know a ton of people love her. I I know she has a relationship with somebody, I, but I can't remember because really I like avoid it. But yeah, we are doing a reading vlog and on my channel when I do reading vlogs, especially when they're not the first book in a series, I just do full spoilers because the whole point of this is like I want to read it along with you guys, give my live reactions as they're happening, just I want you to be able to relive it if you've read it. So that's the point. So all of this is to say if you have not yet read this book, do not watch this video. This is your official warning. Spoilers will be given. I don't want to see comments saying that I ruined your life because I gave spoilers. You'd be surprised how many of those I get even though I explicitly state it. But um, yes, I am going to start this book. I literally have my bookmarks ready right here. I, ah, look how freaking cute they are. I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm going to use Reese first, but I think I'll switch it around. But yes, I'm just going to get started. I will pop back in whenever I have something to say. It might be five pages, might be a hundred pages. I don't know but um, I'm so excited. Okay. Okay, hello guys. I am like 50 pages in and it is one in the morning, so I'm about to go to bed because I have work in the morning, but I wanted to just check in at where I'm at. I, so much of it is slowly coming back to me. I think I kind of like forgot how much there was in this story, how many moving parts there are, how many people, and I'm like slowly remembering. I completely forgot the whole thing with like Jurian. That was obviously a huge deal that happened at the end of the last book. The fact that he's back now and he's like Loki crazy because he was trapped in a freaking ring for a gajillion years and now he's like ready to seek revenge and all the things and I think he's gonna be an interesting character in this book. Um, also, okay, so like where we're at, Feyre is with Tamlin and she's trying to get reconnaissance to figure out when the cauldron is going to be recharged again and she's gonna betray him and go back to Reese essentially. Um, 
I'm literally just still, I'm trying to put the pieces together, so bear with me. But um, these two new friends have shown up and I'm gonna have to look up their names because I literally cannot for the life of me remember the names in these stories are a little complicated. Uh, Princess Branog and Prince Dagden. They're like these twins that showed up and are staying at like Tamlin's place. They give me major freaking um, vibes of the twins in Twilight, Jane and Alec, is that, is that their names? Jane and Alex, I think. Dakota Fanning, um, completely just reminds me of them. They both are like trying to get inside of Farah and Tamlin and Lucian's minds and Farah is like, heck no, putting that block up and I just like, I loved what happened. It literally reminded me of like the scene in Twilight whenever uh, Bella like stops Jane from like using her gift and she like is so pissed. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be interesting. I miss Reese. It's been 50 pages and I freaking miss him. They're talking through the mating bond, but it's not enough. I need him in person. Farah is putting on an Oscar worthy performance and I low key, I feel bad for Lucian. I know like we're mad at him right now, but I feel like he really does care for her and he is the best of the bad guys in this situation. I feel like they'll run away together. He'll go get his mate. I do think it's funny him like already being in love with her and being like, Farrah, don't tell Elaine about this. Don't tell her about this. When they like never even had a real conversation. He literally was just like, you're my mate. And then she was like torn away from him. So I think it'll be interesting once they actually meet. But yeah, I'm only 50 pages in and I just rambled on for like three minutes. So this is gonna be a fun video. Um, yeah, I'm going to bed. I will check in with you guys tomorrow when I've read a little bit more. Okay, hello guys. I'm in the same exact spot probably, but it is the next day. I am now at page about 100. I reached part two, curse breaker, and things are definitely starting to happen. It was a little slow in the beginning. Like I said, I was getting my bearings, but like I am at a point now where I'm like, oh my God, things are about to pop off. Pharaoh is very successfully being a sneaky little snake, pinning everybody against each other and I was getting sad because she was doing it to Lucian and I'm like girl I understand like I would do it too but like I had this soft spot for him and now like they went to the wall and Tamlin and Ianthe is that how you pronounce her name I think so um were there and I was like this is not gonna be good and finally oh my god justice is freaking served her making her I mean kind of sick and twisted Pharaoh making her like break her own hand 5,000 times over I mean I despised her she was an awful human being she deserved it but I was like damn Pharaoh does not come to play I love it and then um, her and Lucian successfully murdering the little Volturi twins I was so tired of them um, I'm glad that they're gone and then now I literally wanted to like shed a tear of happiness because like she's going back to the night court and Lucian's going with her he's going to get his mate literally per like I don't know why I didn't like assume this was gonna happen but I was like I miss Reese so much like I need him back right now and I was really afraid that like a big chunk of this book they were not going to be together and it might still be a bit longer like I feel like it's going to take a little while but I didn't want like three quarters of the book to be them getting back to each other and I this is making me like this is reminding me of if you guys have read from Blood and Ash like where we're at now with that series no spoilers but like same sort of situation of like I feel like the next book is gonna be a lot of like just trying to get back to each other and that just stresses me out like I get it's necessary for stories sometimes and the reunion is always amazing but I'm just like please just be together so it looks like they're going back there right now they're making a pit stop at the autumn court I believe I just read it yeah um Things are heating up, it's great. I feel like we're gonna be full speed ahead from here, but I want to show you guys something that I got in the mail today, um, totally related to what we're doing. I ordered this a while ago, not even a while ago, I guess last week, but I had seen it on TikTok and Instagram months ago, but it kept selling out like instantly, and when it restocked this time, I bought it in half a second. Let's just, let's just show you. Do you see this? I'm gonna give you a second to take it in. It's kind of dark right here, I'll pick it up. Okay, do you understand what this is? It's Farah's freaking dresser with her paintings on it. And then on top are the books, the Akatar books. Is this not the most amazing thing you've ever seen? This is from my favorite little shop in the entire world called um, the Nook Knacks shop. I follow her on Instagram and she is an Etsy and she makes incredible stuff while we're on the subject i will go ahead and show you my other ones i have from her if you are 
interested we were just talking about from blood and ash so i have one from her and it's the willow scene and like the detail is so incredible like literally poppy's veil like sitting on the bench obsessed with it and then i have this one and it's the meadow scene from look at that glitter literally the meadow scene from twilight it's just like the most amazing thing ever and I just love it because this girl makes them by hand. I think she's like a school teacher, like an elementary school teacher, and she makes them by hand. And they're only like $15. Like she should honestly charge way more than she does because the stuff she makes is so amazing. But yeah, I'm obsessed with my little dresser. I can't wait to post a cute little Instagram picture with it, probably to announce that this vlog is up. Quick plug, go follow me on Instagram, nikki's.book.nook. But um, yes. I'm gonna keep reading because now I'm just like dying to know what happens and I need Reese and I'm just excited so You guys I'm only 20 pages further, but when I tell you I just screamed When Cassian and Azriel showed up to rescue there. I literally screamed like I don't know if I've ever felt such pure joy I was just waiting for it. I'm like, where is the help? Show up, save your high lady. And they showed up and they're going back. She said, take me home. This reunion we're about to have. I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm not sleeping tonight. Oh my God. Kiwi and I are here to give you our, our update. Again, another like 20 pages. We had our reunion and I got, uh, there was a little moisture. In my eyes, I'm sorry for people that don't like the word moist or moisture. I just like, I felt it in my soul. Whatever Reese scooped her up and was like, find somewhere else to be for a while. Yes, sir. I just, I felt the freaking love. I'm so happy that they're back together. I just love it. Favorite darling. I'm just, I, everything I wanted and more. I can't wait for them to take over the planet together or the courts or the, Prithian, I, the, there's lots of terms, whatever. Farah, Reese, all my cats are. <laughs> Draco, what you doing up there? Uh, why does work have to exist? I don't wanna go. I wanna call in tomorrow and just read. I feel like that's acceptable. Um, hi guys, I for the life of me cannot remember what the last thing I said was. I took a little break from reading this because the Hating Game movie was coming out and the Hating Game is basically my favorite book of all time. So I, at the last second was like, I need to reread this before I see the movie. So I did that for the last couple days. And then I've been like reading this on and off here and there, little bits and pieces, but I don't remember what I told you last, but I'm on page 276, chapter 27. And I was like, oh crap, I don't know the last time I turned this camera on. So basically if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, but I mean, Lucian and Elaine, nothing's really happened with that yet. He's like in love, obsessed, trying to get to her and it hurts my heart, like seeing him be so in love, but she's like, doesn't even know what's happening in her life right now. She still is like wishing she could be married to her little mortal man. And then, I mean, like Pharaoh wants to learn how to fly. That's a minor detail, but I mean, her and Reese just make my heart freaking explode. like goals in life please such a power duo i mean i'm just like obsessed and freaking nesta i know that she's a bitch but i love her like i can't help but love her like she has every right to be pissy and i feel like there's probably people that like don't like her but i'm like bruh she's been through it like i'll let her and i love the way she just so bluntly asks questions like she's not afraid or embarrassed of anybody or anything and i am so ready to see her obviously blooming relationship with cassian develop because all the tension all the angst like so angsty and i'm 95 percent sure i don't know if it's the next book or court of Sil or court of silver flames i think that book is like from their perspectives or at least focuses on them i knew that Court of Silver Flames focused on Nesta. So now it's for sure, yeah, it's Cassian and Nesta is what I'm gleaning and being foreshadowed, I assume. Was that English what I just said? I don't know, but I'm like ready to see more of them. I'm not gonna lie, like the book is, it's been a little slow for me. Like I 
it's been hard too because I've been busy and it's like this is the kind of book where it's hard if you can only read like a couple chapters at a time or even just one chapter it's hard to get into it like you really need to sit there and read like 100 pages in a row or even like 50 just to like get you going and get you sucked in like if you just read like one chapter and stop it's very like start and stop and go and yeah it's it's kind of slow pace like it's very much like strategy right now figuring out the game plan for this war uh where i most recently was at they went to i'm so bad about naming remembering the names of things they went and visited the bone carver at the court of nightmares and then th this is the city of oh my god let me find it whatever i'm sorry you guys know what i'm saying they went to visit uh kier to get him to fight with them in the war and reese was all sneaky and snuck eris in and um, it sounds like they're gonna team up, but they want access to Valeris. I just, I'm all over the place. That's where I'm at. <laughs> if you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. So um, yeah, interested to see what happens next. There's so many characters, there's so many moving parts and like it's fantastic, but it's just really hard when you like haven't read it in a minute. Like my brain is kind of goo, but um, yeah. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. <laughs> okay guys, hello. Um, things are really starting to take off now. I have my fairy ambiance, Enchanted City, on in the background. Let me turn that off, that might be a little bit distracting. Um, okay, so I feel like the shit's hitting the fan now because some of Highburn's cronies showed up to uh, steal away Nesta and Feyre and um, they had to go down in the, like the pit in the library situation and Feyre had to make a deal with whatever creepy thing was down there that Cassian's scared shitless of. So she has another little tattoo. It said it wanted company. I'm a little confused by that, but um, it's now confirmed that the Queens and basically everyone pretty much wants to kill Nesta, which should be interesting because I guess when she got put in the cauldron, she was pissed, it was taking things from her so she took something from it but we don't know what that thing is and now the cauldron's all pissy and i guess when the first queen went in there it gave her immortality but it made her like an old lady which honestly is the worst thing i could ever imagine like can you imagine the idea of immor immortal immortality i can never say that word the idea of immortality is so fascinating and like intriguing to me like i would obviously love that but if you were stuck in like a body you hated or just like especially an old body i assume she's like whatever they said she was like withered and stuff so yeah she's pissed and then all the other queens aren't gonna go in the cauldron to become fey because they're obviously like um i'm not gonna turn into that so now they all want nesta freaking dead but again like i want to know what exactly she took and what kind of craziness she is they were speculating like she's something to do with death i think a little bit ago that was like a day or two ago that i read that but um elaine is definitely a seer like she sees the future we've been kind of getting like tidbits of that like she's been saying weird prophetic things um and now it's like confirmed she's been like seeing the future so kind of scandalous i feel like from here on out it's gonna get a little bonkers but um yeah i'm panicking I'm panicking and procrastinating because uh, Reese just came face to face with the king of Hibern and Feyre is just watching it through his effing mind and I'm stressed and I don't enjoy it. I'm on chapter 37. I literally got like finished the chapter before this and I've been sitting here for five minutes like I don't like it oh my god guys hello i'm sorry this vlog is so chaotic and disjointed it's taken place over many days many situations i keep forgetting what i've told you last i'm pretty sure where we left i was procrastinating and stressing out can my cats not um, i'm pretty sure i was stressed because uh reese came face to face with king of hybrid and i was like oh my god he's gonna like take him away i was i was stressing but it was a hologram false alarm whatever now we are at like the meeting of all the the high lords and i i love like i love it i love all the different courts and like seeing how all the people from them like look differently and like the the winter and the day and the night and this whatever the summer like it's just so cool like i think it's it's very fun but um Tamlin just made a grand entrance 
And I was not expecting that, but I'm very curious to see what he has to say. Also, Nesta came and her freaking angst with Cassian is simply too much. Whenever she commented on him like being gone and he's like, didn't think you'd care. He didn't say that, but something like that. I can't, I can't, I need it. I'm stressed about what's gonna happen, but we must continue. <laughs> okay, shit, so much is happening. So much has happened. Tamlin's trying to claim that like he wants to fight against Tyburn and he's setting, saying a lot of very not nice things to Feyre and he's very heartbroken, obviously. I guess I'll, no, I don't feel bad for him. Hell no, don't care, hi Kiwi. Um, I just, uh, the freaking Baron is a horrible, horrible, disgusting, hate him. But he just, he was saying some nasty things about Feyre's mate and homegirl went off and just revealed all her freaking powers. I had literally, the reason I had to jump on and talk is because she like started going ham on him and Reese jumping up and being like, where is it? You've proved your point, my love. And then he's like, I love you. The words of that hateful bastard don't mean anything. He has nothing of joy in his life, nothing good. We do. I just like shit. She literally just like screwed them so hard by like revealing her powers. That was like the last freaking card they had. And he's like not even mad at her. He's like, I feel your love. I understand. I do the same. But stop. I love you. Like he's just so. Ugh. I'm interested to see this reaction. I can't. Okay, hello. This is not the most flattering angle for me, but he just looks so darn cute that I'm not gonna make him move. Um, we just got to part three, high lady, and I feel like that is gonna be my stopping point for the night because it is a Tuesday and it is 1.11 a.m. Um, are you really gonna get down after I... So rude, okay. So what just happened was um, Nesta could sense that something was going down. She felt some dread and it turns out Highburn like destroyed the wall. So shit's going down basically and now they're gonna see if they can like use Elaine's fiance's uh, like anti-fairy freaking castle as like a refuge I guess. So they're going to like check that out. And also, Feyre made a deal with the creepy thing down in the library, which we found out his name is Bryaxis. So he's going to fight for them in exchange for a little window, which is kind of cute and kind of made me really sad in his little home in the library. I want to find out more about this. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where we don't like get to know what he looks like because you just she wants you to just imagine him being like the worst thing possible, kind of like a bird box situation. But um, yeah, I think, I, like I said, I'm gonna stop at this part because I feel like from here on out, it's just gonna be like full on friggin' war. I'm very interested to see like what continues to happen with Tamlin, like how he handles everything. Is he gonna try to snatch her back again or are we over it? Is he just gonna die? Because that'd be kind of nice. Um, also, we found out Lucian's dad is not actually his dad and that um, Lucian's mom had a little affair with Helion, which I think is the day court. Hi, Lord, I can't keep them straight, man. It's kind of difficult. Um, but yeah, tea, lots of tea. I very much feel like I was like, I don't know, like it, it's been good so far, but I've just had a hard time like getting into it and like fully committing. But like now I'm like, all right, things are like happening. I feel like it's go time. It's just been a lot of like strategy and now I'm like, I'm ready for the war, but um, yeah, I will probably finish it or almost finish it tomorrow. So I will talk to you guys then. Okay, hello guys. Look at me reading in the daylight. This never happens, but I feel like now as we're getting more towards the end, my check-ins are gonna be much more frequent because little bits of information are revealed, but um, they went to Elaine's man's house, Grayson, and um, he, he was a total jerk and didn't want her and um, Nesta smacked him across the face and it was fabulous. But they are gonna let people stay at their castle thing as refuge. And uh, Jurian was playing a silly little game and he's actually a good guy. And Tamlin is definitely a bad guy. He confirmed that he ran back to Hibern and spilled the beans about everything going on. So 
kind of love that. I had a feeling about Durian. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Like in the beginning, I'm like, I know I'm supposed to hate you, but I weirdly am enjoying your presence. And I feel like there's more to you. And it seems like there is. So I'm on chapter 55, page 502. We have less than 200 pages left. Let's go. Why am I about to get emotional over this surreal dying? Like, I really felt that in my soul. First of all, so freaking happy Ianthe, if that's how you even say her name, is dead because she's disgusting, hate her, and that was a fabulous, a fabulous death for a not so fabulous lady. But the surreal telling Feyre, leave the world a better place than how you found it. Ugh. I just love that. I feel like I'm having a little like Dobby moment. Not quite that intense. Calm down, but it was just very, it was pretty sad and a little bit wholesome. Ugh, okay, I have to go to the grocery store, so I have to take a little bit of a break, but the cauldron just freaking showed up and kidnapped Elaine. Is Lucian gonna show up and rescue her? Cause I would love that. Um, this is not a good stopping place. I mean, it's kind of a good stopping place because I'm really excited to continue, but ugh, why do I need food? I hate it here. Okay, I'm back. I promise you can tell because I'm on a different side of the couch now, but um, they went to go rescue Elaine. Um, Farah and Azriel went and Farah like camouflaged herself as Ianthe because we know that bitch is dead. So that was the only way to like sneak into the camp, but they like were getting her to leave and then they rescued another girl, whatever, it doesn't matter. They were like trying to, Farah had to fly. Azrael's like, it's go time, bitch. I gotta carry two of these people. You gotta fly, you gotta do it. And they almost like didn't make it. And freaking Tamlin swooped in and like protected her. And I'm a little emo about it also. What the, ugh. I mean, I freaking hate Tamlin. I literally never, even from the beginning, if you watch my first book, I, my first book, my vlog on the first book, I was kind of like, eh, I'm waiting for like, I just feel like this is not the one. Like, this is not the moment. Like, it's like, eh, okay, but we can do better. Never a fan of him. And then he obviously was horrific in Akamath. Like, we, we do not stand Tamlin. But he obviously does freaking love her. And she like shattered his heart into a million pieces. Don't blame her, of course, but kind of low-key very sad that he's still like defending her and protecting her and he like helped her fly he like sent her some wind that's so freaking sad um but he got away he almost like low-key died it seemed like but he got away too so i feel like he'll make a reappearance but i'm like is this like your character arc sir are you done being a villain like are we just like over it now or is he gonna switch up again interested to see Okay, we have 100 pages left. I feel this is a milestone. Um, we have learned Moore's real reasoning for not being interested in Israel, which, like, good for her. You know, she's just, she's interested in f women. But, like, I kind of really shipped them. So, now I'm like, I feel like she's trying to ship Azrael and Elaine. Like that's kind of been happening the whole book. And then even Pharaoh was like, why can't he just be her mate? And I'm like, I kind of agree. And Lucian's obviously been off on this like mission trying to find this other queen, but they're mates. And I'm like, I just feel like Azrael needs somebody. It's making me a little sad that he's alone. So like what's happening with Elaine, I don't know. I feel like that's gonna be like a later book thing. And I am thinking, because I know that like Nesta kind of has her own book, so I feel like we're not even really going to get to see her and Cassian's relationship until that, which I'm happy about because I was getting worried in this book. I felt like they were going to like already be together or something and then we we're going to jump into that book. I would rather see the slow burn and the angst continue to build, you know? Um, that's a whole side tangent, but basically Amran just announced that she knows how to stop Highburn and his whole army. So that's where we are with 100 pages left. I'm 100% powering through and finishing this tonight because I gotta know what happens. So let's go. Okay, battle is going down. Um, Feyre went and got the bone carver. She got the Ouro Ouroboros, the mirror thing. Um, the whole thing with looking into it is that it just shows you like your most true self. Oh, I, sorry, I have my ambiance music on in the background still. Um, 
it shows you your most true self so people like go insane by seeing like the worst parts of themselves but she just like endured it until she loved herself i guess and then the mirror handed it over to her um she got the bone carver and she got uh bryaxis and then reese surprised her and got the weaver as well which is the bone carver's like twin sister i guess so they were all like fighting for them at the front of their lines and it's like hell yeah look at us mm. and then um baron like the autumn court showed up and Tamlin's court showed up. I am not gonna get emo for Tamlin, absolutely not, but he's helping out. Um, and then I guess Hybern unleashed the power of the cauldron just now and Nesta could sense it was gonna happen. And so she like fell to her knees and was like, Cassian, Cassian. And he like, I, he like heard her and came towards her. And right after that, the cauldron blasted and killed a bunch of people and Cassian would have been right in the middle of it. So she saved his life. So they're in love is what I'm hearing. Um, also again, right after I said how I feel like Azrael and Elaine are being shipped, this was like earlier. Um, he like gives her this knife and Reese is like, nobody has, like he's never given that knife to anybody to use. So like, Definitely seems like there's a thing there. And once again, is Lucian gonna show back up? I don't know, that's like the least of our worries right now. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I'm honestly confused what the cauldron even is. I know we're three books in and I should know this, but I'm just like, okay, it's a literal cauldron, obviously, cause like Nesta and Elaine went in it and became Fey. But it's like a cauldron, but it sounds like you can use the power to like, I, I don't fully understand. Sorry, <laughs> like maybe I missed it, but I'm just, I'm literally, Sarah J. Mass, like I don't know how her brain works, like her stories are so intricate, there's so many parts, like the, I don't know how she plans this stuff out. There's so many pieces of information and it's amazing, but it's like I cannot pick up every single thing at some points. I'm just like, you know what, just go with the flow, just accept it, don't question it, but um, yeah, like 60 pages left. Okay, I'm gonna be quite honest, I'm a bit, overwhelmed um so like Feyre and Amran went to the cauldron to like stop it but I guess Amran betrayed her I'm confused she like was like touch the cauldron and then she was all like attached to it and then she's like JK sorry I lied closed the spell book like throws it away and then Nesta is like over here making this diversion with Cassian to the king and I guess she's like connected to this cauldron clearly has like some mega power but Feyre is like useless right now because she's like latched onto it i guess but they were making it seem like the cauldron was like with nesta so i'm like is this metaphorical or it's actually with nesta dragging pharaoh along like i'm i'm very confused oh also important tidbit um highburn threw them for a loop whenever nesta made her little diversion he showed up with their dad and just like casually snapped his neck which honestly i'm okay with because i never enjoyed him he was not he was kind of a very crappy dad that didn't care very much about his daughters, in my opinion, but, um... Nesta badass bitch is, like, going to battle with Highburn, Like, getting all crazy because he's, like, beating up Cassian and it's making me very sad. Ripping up his wings and shit and breaking his bones. And she's like, I'm gonna kill you. And goes a little ape shit on him. Um, and then Cassian, like, professes his love for her. Like, the only regret I have in my life is that we did not have time together. Mwah. He's like, I'll find you in the next life and we'll have time. Like, can you not do this to me right now on a Wednesday night? <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. I can't do it. But then Elaine showed up with Azriel's knife. And, oh, also, I don't think I mentioned the freaking queen that uh, Lucian went to find showed up with her army and then also Miriam and Draken showed up. Draken, is that his name? They showed up. It's just one big happy movie moment right now of things coming together. This is feeling very Game of Thrones, like the White Walker episode. Elaine popping in to like save the day was very much Arya with like the White Walker. Spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't seen that, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a lot. I need to know Amran's intentions and like why what just happened happened, but um, yeah, it's too much. <laughs> this roller coaster of emotions <laughs> that I just experienced. 
not okay. It's not holy. Okay. Where does one begin? Um, Amrin like didn't betray Pharaoh because the secret was actually that she had to like un bind herself and it would unleash her true self and she's the one that was supposed to destroy everyone. Okay, great. So she like did that. And then the cauldron, I, I might be forgetting details because I'm kind of traumatized right now, but the cauldron like exploded. So then they were like, oh shit, blah. So Vera's, Reese is like, Vera, you can fix it. You're a conduit. You can fix it. And she's like, with what power? And he's like, mine, use mine. <laughs> Actually killed him on accident. I, my heart fell to my literal asshole. Sorry if that's gross. I, when it's like, when it said he was dead, I was like, back up. I had to go back and read the page before because I was like, how? How did this happen? How did this happen? Um, but then. She was like, all of you, all the High Lords, do what you did for me, whatever, when they made her a fae and like saved her life. And they're like, I guess they're like, it doesn't work that way. He's already fae. She's like, I don't care, try it. And so they all like gave it and then she gave her a little seed of power. And then she's like, oh shit, we're missing one. And it was Tamlin. And Tamlin was there. And she's like, I'll do anything. I'll give you anything, anything you want. Tell me. And he literally just looks at her and I'm just like, I swear to fucking God. What are you about to say? And he said, he said, be happy, Pharaoh. Be happy. Be happy. What the fuck? And then he saved Reese. <sighs> okay, come on. You can't. I am a decisive person when it comes to how I feel about characters and people. I'm very passionate in my thoughts. I always am like, I hate you or I love you. I don't, I, I know, I know people's intentions. I'm able to figure it out early on and I have a good sense of like when, of people, of characters. And Tamlin, I was like, I don't know about him. And then obviously like last book, I freaking hated him. But then this book, this redemption arc. <laughs> I physically, I can't, I can't, and then Amra's, Amran's alive too, which is cute, which honestly was kind of annoying, um, I mean, I like her, but I, someone's gotta die, you know, we gotta have some deaths here and there, and to me, like, she was the least important character to me of the group, it was still made me really sad that she, like, gave up her life, but, you know, I was willing to take that, but now she's back too, so it's one big happy family, but holy shit, if you're wondering why I'm not sobbing, it t it's like really hard for me to cry. Like it takes a lot for a book or anything to make me cry. I got weepy eyed for sure. There was some moisture, but um, yeah, that was pretty damn, that was rough. That was rough. I didn't enjoy that, but I mean, he's alive now, so we're good. But I was like, cause once again, I know that like Court of Silver Flames is like focused on Nesta, I guess. So I was like, is Reese literally just gonna die right now? Like, are we just like getting rid of that character? And then it's like, hey, now it's on Nesta's story. I was about to be very upset, but um, yeah, we've got like a teeny tiny bit left, like tw not even 20 pages. So let's finish it out and then I will give my final thoughts. This video is gonna be an hour long. You're welcome. Okay guys, this has been quite the journey. I finished, I'm done and I, I don't even know. I have so many thoughts, but I'm also just, it's so weird. I felt like it took so long to get into this book in the beginning. Like it just seemed like it was going really slow. And then all of a sudden it was like, bam, bam, bam. And like the last half just flew and then it was just over. And now I have the same like achy feeling I had at the end of um, A Court of Mist and Fury. Basically, I, the way it ended was like they're trying to re-strategize or rediscuss, I guess, the treaty between the Fae and the human world is what it sounds like. Um, it was left kind of, I don't know, it felt like it was kind of done in a way. Like the story very much could have ended there, but I think it was, it is pretty open-ended in a way. Like I just don't know what happens next. I guess maybe the next order of business is like all the other queens. Like maybe they're the next like bad guys they're going to be going against. I don't know, because again, I do know that the next book is like not focused on, well, there's the novella, which honestly, I'm not like thrilled about reading. I'm going to, obviously, but I just generally don't love novellas because I feel like a lot of times they're just kind of like 
filler stuff and like unnecessary and I feel like a lot of times they just seem kind of forced. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna skip it. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it because it's in the order. But then I do know a court of silver flames for sure like doesn't directly focus on Farah and Reese from what I understand. So so fascinated to see more of Nesta and more of Cassian and see where it goes. Um, this book I did really like it. I think Sarah J Mass is a freaking genius and I don't understand how how she does it. It doesn't make any sort of sense to me. I will say, being honest as always, uh, this book by far was my least favorite of the three, I think. Um, I don't know, the first book is such an introductory book and it's so different than the other two, but like A Court of Mist and Fury was like just absolutely god tier through and through. Like that book was incredible. And this one, I'm just not super into like war and like strategizing war and stuff like that and like this was like the whole book was that so that's why i think i had a hard time kind of getting into it i just never love that aspect of fantasy books like i don't mind when the war is happening but it's like it's just all of it like the strategy the build up to it like i i, I just don't love that personally it's not my thing so i think that's why i just didn't love this book as much as the other ones i feel like to me this book felt like because i i don't know how many more there are in the series like i know there's going to be more after a court of silver flames i feel like this book fits i always say every long series like this there is a book that i call like my order of the phoenix book i love the entire harry potter series but i feel like order of the phoenix is that book that's kind of in the middle of the series that's like the big shift where like the series kind of like things culminate and they come together and now it's like the shift of like you know war and it's getting serious and like all the pieces come together and all the shit kind of hits the fan and like from here on out the story like shifts and um you know again like i don't dislike the order of the phoenix but it's just my least favorite in the series because of that but it's still like one of the most absolute necessary books in the series. And that's just kind of how I felt about this one personally. But I mean, yeah, super good. I'm obsessed with Farah. She's literally the most like strong, amazing female character ever. Like she's just kind of like too perfect. I'm like, how are you so like not fearful and just powerful and just the ultimate badass that I could absolutely never be? She's incredible. And then, I mean, Reese, I don't even have to say it. Like, come on, every aspect of him is just out of this world, amazing, and them together is amazing, but I have a feeling Nesta and Cassian. I can't stop talking about it because I'm excited for it. I'm also excited to see what happens with Lucian and uh, Elaine, because they kind of had a little moment at the end here too. So um, yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. It's like 10.45 at night, but I'm gonna go ahead and edit and post this vlog because I've been filming it for like over a week and a lot of people have been waiting for it. So I wanna get it up for you guys. Um, but yeah, I will definitely, like, when I continue with the series, I will vlog. I don't know if I'll vlog the novella. I might just, like, pop in and tell you guys, like, what I thought of it. But I'll for sure vlog Court of Silver Flames because I'm really excited about that one. I don't know when it'll be. I'm not going to do it right away, but I'm just going to say soon, and I'm not going to make any promises, but I promise, I will promise, you will get a vlog of it. But yes, that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!